Hi guys. Sorry this is looking a bit of a mess, but I was going through my bits and pieces and realised I'd never finished one of my projects, which was a remote release for rubber band powered cars. I was trying to rig it up so it would work from infrared. Um, I'll just show you what we've got. We've got a coil here, a neodymium magnet, which is on the end of a little rod. That little rod there sticks into the wheel of your rubber band powered car. When the coil is activated, it attracts the neodymium magnet, so that pulls it across there, and the little peg is released from the wheel, and the car shoots off. I had rigged up a fairly complicated circuit to run it, uh, using one of those 4017 chips, a counter chip, um, and a relay. And I was fiddling away trying to get that to work, and I thought, I'm actually getting too complicated. All I need to do is to get the coil to activate it and pull that in. This does some clever things, which I don't need it to do. All I really need is an infrared detector. Uh, that's a, effectively a transistor. When that sees an infrared source, it switches on that transistor and that transistor switches on that transistor and that operates the relay. Because your infrared source is actually pulsing, if I just press the button you'll see, normally we do all sorts of bits of clever circuitry to smooth out that pulse to give us just a steady current flow. Well it doesn't matter in my case, as long as that relay is being operated, even if it's chattering, that's going to be enough to operate the coil and attract the magnet. So I don't need that fancy circuitry, I just need a couple of transistors, a couple of resistors and the infrared detector. I can't remember what it's called, that's why I'm stuttering a bit there. So I should be able to draw up that little circuit diagram, mount this actually on the car, and it should be able to release itself. I personally prefer to have this mounted on the ground, but the person who asked the original question wanted it mounted on the car, so it means there's going to be a bit of weight on the car, because we need to... I can make this a bit smaller, but that needs to sit on the car. The 9 volt battery that's powering the coil needs to sit on the car. The 9 volt battery that's actually running this little circuit needs to sit on the car. And that bit of circuitry needs to sit on the car. So it's all a bit much. Whereas if it's all sat on the ground, and I've already demonstrated it works perfectly well sitting on the ground, um, we wouldn't need to put the weight on the car. But this works anyway, and it works from any remote control. I don't even need to point it very much in the direction still works, more or less wherever you point it, because that's the way these things work. I've put together a bit of a, a Frankenstein rubber band powered car here. It's all different bits from various old rubber band powered cars, but what the important bit is we've got the remote release bit on the front here. So. pegs in the wheel, so I'll go to the other end of the kitchen and we'll release it with my remote control. Okay, so any button we like. Go. It works. Not much 
point ch me chasing up and down the kitchen because the thing we want to see is the remote operation. So I'll just wind it up again and do it another time. So I say these are all bits from other cars that I've just cobbled together so we've got something to demonstrate. Place. There we are. Now I'll go and put that at the other end. Just give it a few more turns on the rubber band. Control. So I say it should be any button that does it. Yep. So there we go. A success. Well, I'd better draw up the circuit diagram. So I say that's a very much simplified circuit to the one that I was building. So I'll draw it up. It's all a bit heavyweight there. All that stuff. And I've put it at the front to keep it out of the way of the rubber band. So you could minimise this, reduce it down quite a bit. Right guys, I'll just see if I can talk you through this circuit diagram I've actually drawn up. First point is over here is the unlabeled infrared detector that I've scavenged out of an old DVD player. Um, it could be a TSOP1738, that seems to be the sort of thing I see in other people's diagrams, but I don't know if it is. And certainly looking at other people's diagrams, the that would be the ground, and that's the live, they appear to be reversed to the ones in the diagrams that I've seen for TSOP1738. So that's the way it is on my circuit, but it doesn't appear to be correct according to the diagrams I've looked at. So I haven't numbered them. They should be, I think it's something like one, two, three, or something going across them, but I'm not sure, but that's the way it's working for me. So I've got a 9 volt battery, positive along the top here, negative along the bottom. From the detector, we've got a wire with a 1K resistor on it, goes to a 2N2222 transistor. When that's triggered we get a feed across here via a LED to another 2N2222 resist, uh, transistor and when that turns on the current flows through this relay over here. So the contacts swing across to the from the normally closed to the normally open. That completes the circuit for this hand wound coil that I made. That makes a magnetic field. That attracts my neodymium magnet which pulls across and that releases the wheel of the car. Oh, there's another 1K resistor there. I didn't mention that, did I? But there's very little to this. Two transistors two resistors, one LED, this harvested detector, relay. I think the one I've actually got in there is labelled 5 volts and I'm running it off 9 volts so probably overdoing it but it works. That um, diode there is just to take any of the, as I would call it, back EMF but it's whatever they call it. I can't remember what they call it. It's when the current switches off, you get a bit of a back spike there. Um, but that's what I've used. As I, as I said, using the TV remote pulses this, which means that pulse is on and off, which means that pulse is on and off, which means the relay chatters, but that doesn't matter because all I need is for it to operate once 
to release the wheel. The fact that it carries on chattering doesn't matter at all. So this is a quick and dirty method of doing it. You could have tidied it up, or I could have tidied it up, by putting a 555 timer in here or something to smooth out the chatter. But I didn't need to. So, job done.